Now, last night, something happened on this show that shouldn't have been the least bit controversial, but it sent certain hardcore Fox-hating liberals into a complete frenzy. So what happened? Well, two people from different political parties, oftentimes who fight with each other, well, they actually discussed issues where we found common ground. Oh, common ground, gasp. Well, our guest was California Congressman Ro Khanna, a progressive Democrat. Well, the two of us disagree on most everything, well, a heck of a lot at least, but we set that aside to focus on things we agree on, mainly military spending and overseas deployments. Let me be clear. I mean, I was for the strikes in Afghanistan. If terrorists hit right, our country, right. we need to do that. But I supported President Trump in getting the troops out of uh, Afghanistan. I've supported President Trump saying we don't need the troop presence in Germany. There is a consensus that we are spread out too far and that this is not in our national security. Trump spoke to that coalition. Now, in the House, think about this. Neither the populist conservatives nor the anti-war Democrats like Khanna represent a majority on their own. But together, they can form a powerful voting bloc to move policy and oppose what may be coming down the pike should Biden assume the presidency. Now, his foreign policy team is shaping up to be far more hawkish and more interventionist than Trump's. Now, regarding Biden's nominee for Secretary of Defense, Michelle Flournoy, Kana voiced legitimate, important concerns. She was for an escalation in Afghanistan. She was for uh, Iraq. She was for Syria. Uh, these policies have cost us trillions of dollars. China hasn't been in a war since 1979. We've been in 40 wars. Uh, if you view China as our biggest strategic competitor in the 21st century, then these policies aren't what's going to allow America to win uh, and compete. Absolutely. And America needs to focus on our own country's needs, especially the challenges uh, after the challenges of 2020. My goodness. Now, many of us across the political spectrum believe that our party's foreign policy experts have failed us for decades. Heck, that's one of the reasons Trump won. He's so popular. And we're happy to find allies in our battle to stop them from selling us out once again. Congressman Khanna, I would love to have you back because I actually think there are a lot of issues where Republicans can work with uh, progressives, conservatives can work with progressives, and we'd love to have you back as this develops. I appreciate that. I'd love the opportunity. Well, that moment was enough to blow the face masks off the crazies. Almost immediately, social media lit up. Aaron Rupar at Vox tweeted, I'm not sure why any Democrat would validate Laura Ingram's show by going on it for a friendly interview, but that's what Ro Khanna just did. Now, Khanna responded, please watch the interview. It's about cutting the defense budget and stopping endless wars. I stated my position clearly and consistently. If someone on Fox is willing to talk about cutting the defense budget, why not engage? He went on to note that great people like Lincoln and Dr. King were able to build important coalitions in the past and said he believes in the possibility of overlapping consensus. Now, the bottom line is this, the establishment in both parties over 30 years have gotten some big issues wrong. Iraq, Syria, and China, just to name a few. On the issue of endless wars, prominent liberals agree with Trump's position, even if they, most of them, don't want to give him credit. No great nation fights endless wars. It is time to bring our combat troops home from the Middle East. Don't be fooled by Trump's argument that he's pulling U.S. troops out of the Middle East or ending the forever wars. They're very worried that we are not going to be involved in endless wars. I've signed a pledge to end the forever wars. But honest liberals, they have to admit that Trump's anti-war record over four years speaks for itself. It's up to the grassroots in both parties to push their leaders into a more positive direction for the regular working people. Now, Republicans did that in both elections, overwhelmingly supporting Donald Trump's America First agenda and growing his popularity among the voters. But Democrats chose Biden, who on key foreign policy issues actually agrees with the old GOP establishment. So this is where the left-right coalition makes a lot of sense. Now, here's a quick overview of where we can actually work together. Number one, we can preserve Trump's tariffs on steel and aluminum, which would save jobs in those key industries. 
Number two, we could support the ongoing antitrust investigation into Google and push for other restraints to limit the power of big tech, like repealing Section 230. We could oppose the Trans-Pacific Partnership or any other trade deal not supported by workers. We can push for the strict Buy America rules for all government spending. Now, Biden says he's for this, but this requires an important change in the law as it's currently written. Number five, we could support a strong infrastructure program that will create jobs for Americans. Yes, Americans. And as Congressman Khanna and I discussed last night, we can push to bring home all troops in the Mideast and reduce our military commitments that are not directly aimed at China. This will mean, of course, insisting that Europe do more to defend itself. Now, Trump has done the right thing on every one of these issues. And progressives who truly care about working people will be wise to work with us to advance these shared goals. As for the media, everyone's grousing about this interview last night. I still remember when they love the idea of everyone getting along. Harry Truman, uh, he believed in the green light, but his green light was bipartisanship. Calls for bipartisanship, of course, are easy. Actually acting on them is not. Does that still exist? Are there issues that you talk to your colleagues across the aisle and say, Let, let's work together on this? But apparently, they only like bipartisanship when it advances the causes the elites care about. It's so obvious and so cynical. And the smart people see through this. Progressives with integrity responded forcefully to the haters who attacked Khanna for appearing on the angle. Journalist Zaid Jelani said Ro Khanna shouldn't go on the most popular cable news network to talk about cutting the Pentagon budget? What is Vox's theory of change, transmitting information to the same 500 people in Brooklyn who agree with them over and over? Bingo. It's called politics. And the point of politics is making people's lives better, at least it should be, which means sometimes working with people you don't necessarily like. Is the squad, by the way, AOC plus three, are they capable of shelving their hatred for Trump supporters in order to improve life for their constituents? We'll see. The door is always open on this show. And that's The Angle.